Hello my dear friends, in this video will address the issue of using the correct amount of FACO power. More often than not, the difficulties we face while performing the various steps of FACO is usually because we end up doing too less and not the other way around. For instance, the difficulties we experience during the crack and separation of the nucleus in the divide and conquer technique and the direct chop is more often due to the trench being too shallow rather than too deep and in the direct chop it's because of the hold being too shallow rather than being too deep. Similarly during fragment removal stage with the correct level of vacuum and the correct level of air for for a given grade of cataract we often end up with sluggish fallibility and slow responsiveness because we end up using too little FACO power rather than too much. The jackhammer effect of FACO energy is essential and is the most effective way to emulsify the fragments but like steroids, they should be administered in the correct dose for it to be effective, as this video is going to show you. When you take a look at this video clip that has been performed by my gritty and determined junior consultant, you find that the fragment removal stage shows a very sluggish fallibility. The vacuum and the AFR are adequate for this grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract. But what has gone wrong here is that the surgeon has set the FACO power at 40% in the pulse mode, but getting scared to use FACO energy is only depressing the foot pedal in foot pedal position 3 to half its full excursion, the power being in the linear mode. And when we use lesser amount of power, let's look at this in the correct perspective. Once the tip is occluded, the inflow will stop. This can be seen in the drip chamber of the infusion of the IV set. The pump keeps rotating, causing the vacuum to rise to the preset levels. It is precisely at this moment that we need to turn on the FACO power to emulsify the nucleus. Once emulsified, the piece gets removed and the flow gets restored, driving the next fragment towards the FACO tip. If at this point one employs too little FACO power, then the emulsification is also slow and inefficient. Maybe with the intention of conserving FACO power delivered or to reduce the effect of FACO time or even to minimize imagined endothelial damage, the surgeon who has a power preset of 40% in the linear mode for a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract but ends up pressing the foot pedal position to only half its full excursion, thereby delivering only 20% of power which will struggle to emulsify the nucleus. Things become sluggish in spite of the correct vacuum settings and the AFR. The Delivery of the full and correct FACO power on the tip occlusion will efficiently remove the piece. It will prevent the buildup of high vacuum which occurs on full tip occlusion and thereby reduce surge. It will re-establish the flow and propel the next piece towards the tip, improving machine responsiveness and finally power delivery into the nucleus substance on occlusion will almost wholly be absorbed by the nucleus and therefore it is safe and definitely effective. Some surgeons like to use the second instrument like a mechanical tool to break the fragment once full occlusion has occurred, leading to techniques like chop and stuff and micro chop in order to conserve echo energy. However, while mechanical forces can be successfully used in breaking down the nucleus into fragments, fragment removal is most effectively achieved with the use of echo energy. The use of FACO energy is the underlying essence of FACO emulsification. It is harmful only when the FACO power is given in the absence of occlusion. Power preset is too high for a nucleus grade or staying in foot pedal position 3 when you are coming back to the beginning of the trench. Do not be afraid to use FACO power for it is a powerful and effective tool when harnessed correctly. And with the use of proper dispersive viscoelastics can be safe even in denser grades of cataract. So this is what I'm going to show you in the next video clip. So after I create the fragments, in this case mechanical energy is primarily used to break down the nucleus into smaller size fragments. Once the fragments are created, it's very important to use the FACO power rather than mechanical force to break this down. So please note that for fragment removal, I'm using the same settings that my consultant used. There's a FACO power of 30% and a vacuum of 300 millimeters of mercury. The FACO power is at the pulse mode, 40 pulses per second and a duty cycle of 40%. You can see the marked difference in the way the fragment removal is occurring as opposed to the previous case. And this is just a matter of using the power at the right time in order to increase 
the emulsification of the nucleus fragments. So the message I'd like to convey is use the power judiciously and correctly in order to get better results with FACO. Thank you for your attention.